Now let us talk about uh, GPS that is global positioning system and uh, this development actually began in uh, 1973 and first satellite became operational in the year 1978 and it was declared completely functional in 1995. A total of 52 satellites have been launched in four phases and 30 satellites are currently functional. And it is managed by US Department of Defense originally developed for submarines and now part of modern smart bombs, highly accurate missiles and uh, for uh, public use and most of the public use like in agriculture, like remote sensing, GIS or everywhere. Now you can find GPS. There are three segments of GPS. First is your space segment where you find the satellites or constellation of satellite. Then there is a master station or we call it as a control segment. This is the control segment, right? These are all control segment. Then this is the user segment, means you and me. We have a GPS device, so we are termed as our user. This is, will be our user segment place. Now, let us start with the control segment. These are all the various stations and these are the legends of what I wanted to uh, show here. For example, this is a monitor station and here we are in Diego Garcia, we have ground station and here we have a master control station. This is the space segment, this is the satellite and user segment like military, search and rescue, disaster relief, surveying as I was mentioning, uh, marine aeronautical terrestrial navigation, remote uh, control vehicle and robot guidance, then satellite positioning and tracking, shipping, GIS and recreation. There are four primary functions of GPS. First of all, position and coordinates. This is the most important function of GPS. Then the distance and the direction between any two waypoints or a position and a waypoint. Then travel progress reports and accurate time measurements. So the position is based actually on the time. So we have very uh, highly accurate atomic clocks placed in these satellites. And as you see, the signal leaves a satellite at certain time t and it reaches to the user segment at t plus 3. So signal is picked up by the receiver at time t plus 3. So the distance between the satellite and the receiver will be three times the speed of the light. This is how the distance is computed. And these are the pseudo random noise code and which shows these are the time differences and this is satellite PRN and these are the receiver PRN. So this time difference actually is used or employed to compute the actual positions. So what time is it anyway? For example, you have universal coordinate time, you have GMT, GPS time and say Zulu time. Local time may be in AM and PM which is adjusted for local time zone and then we have a military time that is local time on 24 hour clock. So GPS time is currently ahead of this UTC by 13 seconds. The signal from one satellite, the receiver is somewhere in this sphere, right? If uh, uh, you know this is one satellite and some receiver is receiving some some uh, signals then if receiver is able to see or lock this satellite receiver is somewhere here now uh, this is a whole sphere so now now the position cannot be identified let us see that if the receiver is able to uh, lock two satellites at together, then uh, the position is somewhere here. If the user is able to log the third satellite as well, then the intersection of these three sphere is the position of the user or the user segment or the GPS receiver. So this is triangulating current position of uh, the user or the receiver because this cannot be this this is actually the current the correct position and this is three dimensional positioning 
of of a receiver so this is what triangulation means and this is how the exact location of uh, the receiver from three or more satellites may be computed so there is uh, some or the other aspects of gps like selective availability because the defense department did the satellite time message reducing position accuracy to uh, to some gps because the accuracy cannot be given to everybody so this selective availability was designed to prevent america's enemy from using gs gps against uh, gps and uh, their allies so in may 2000 the pentagon reduced south uh, this um, selective availability to zero meters error and this selective uh, availability could be reactivated at any point by the government these are the sources of error which can be there in your gps uh, if you are using gps or gps device so standard positioning service sps for civilian users source may be satellite clock around this much meter 1.5 to 3.6 Orbital errors less than one meter, ionosphere around five to seven meter, troposphere like 0.5 to 0.7 meter, receiver noise because uh, the user segment receives it 0.3 to 1.5, multipath also 0.6 to 1.2, selectively availability as I just suggested, and user error up to a kilometer or more. So errors are cumulative and increased by PDO. This is what we are going to see. This is a dilution of a point. Positional dilution of point. These are the sources of signal interference. We have earth atmosphere, then these are the solid structure, these are electromagnetic fields and metals, all are the sources of signal interference. And receiver errors are cumulative, like this system and other flaws, around less than 9 meters. User error is plus minus 1 meter. And this is the GPS navigation terminology or what all terms are employed while talking about GPS. We have uh, say bearing, uh, distance to waypoint, speed over ground, tracking, present location and active uh, go to point. So location where uh, go to was executed and active go to waypoint. So this is the active leg and this is how uh, you know we need to see a path on the ground. So course over ground, this is the course over ground. This is actual course over ground. And this is the bearing. This is the bearing. And cross track XTE is also there like this. This is cross, -tier X, uh, cross uh, track error that is XTE. The bearing is around 65. For this particular example, bearing is some degree. COG that, that is course over ground is 5 degree and XTE that is cross track and error is 1 by 2 or half a mile. Now here we have bearing 40 degree COG 104 degree and XTE as uh, 0.25 miles. Again there is a variation of bearing COG and XTE. So these, this is the GPS navigation on the ground. The positional fix, a position is based on real-time satellite tracking. It is defined by the set of coordinates. It has no name. The position represents only an approximation of the receiver's true location. Only the approximation. Please uh, you know, remember this. A position is not static. It changes constantly as the GPS receiver moves or wanders due to random errors. And receiver must be in 2D or 3D mode, at least 3 to 4 satellite needs to be acquired in order to provide a position fix. So 3D mode dramatically improves your positional accuracy. The waypoint, the waypoint is based on coordinates entered into the GPS receiver's memory. So it can be either a saved position where you, your house is or your location is or office is or user entered coordinates. So it can be created for any remote point on earth and it must have a receiver designated code or number or user supply key. So once entered this waypoint and saved, the waypoint remains unchanged in the receiver's memory until edited or deleted. Planning a navigation route. This is a start. These are various waypoints. These are various waypoints. So this is the route. So how a receiver sees your route. 
blue circles these are blue circles the potential circle of gps error at each waypoint these are the yellow star where you want to go and these green star where the gps receiver may take you this is gps uh, waypoint circle of error and as we talk about gps satellite geometry satellite geometry can affect the quality of uh, gps signals and accuracy of receiver triliteration as i was suggesting dop that is dilution of precision reflect each satellite's position relative to other satellite being accessed by a receiver so there are five distinct type of uh, dops uh, the important is a positional dilution of precision that is pdop is a dop value used most commonly in gps to determine the quality of receiver's position so it usually uh, up to gps receiver to pick satellites which provide the best position of after triangulation so more advanced gps uh, receivers can filter out poor dop values this is this is uh, ideal satellite geometry see these are the ideal you know uh, equally located uh, as far as receiver is concerned this is good satellite geometry if you are here this is very good satellite geometry but this is poor satellite geometry if you are here and you are finding all um, satellites very near or you know not giving enough separation not having enough separation to actually point out where you are this is a good one and this is the poor satellite geometry if you have this much of separation of two points where you want to uh, mark yourself then this will be a poor satellite geometry now coming to differential gps differential gps may be of a two type real time and post processing real time differential gps we have a receiver and this is a dgps receiver and this is a dgps site you have four satellites what it does it gives you some value x plus 30 y plus 60 say and what it gives to the dgps side x plus 5 y minus 3 so the co two coordinates are actually x plus 0 y plus 0 so the correction will be because 5 is added so you need, need to subtract 5 3 is subtracted so you need to add 5 and this is sent this is actually sent to the dgps receiver what dgps ps does is it deduct 5 from this x plus 30 so what it does is, is it gives you x plus 25 while at y plus 60 it adds it tells to add 3 so 3 is added now of y plus 63 this is the true coordinates these are the true coordinates now coming to wide area augmentation system or we call it vas these are geostationary vas satellite and these are gps constellations so we have vas control station here and these are the local area system LAS. These, this is our you know moving object or moving uh, aircraft. We have VAS control station is so it actually enhances the accuracy. So how good is this VAS wide area augmentation system? Uh, with selective availability set to zero, the and under ideal condition, the GPS receiver without VAS can achieve 15 meter accuracy most of the time. Plus minus. 15 but under ideal condition a vas equipped gps receiver can achieve 3 meter accuracy 95 percent of the time the precision depends on good satellite geometry first of all open sky view and no user input errors let me also highlight those satellite those uh, constellation or those gps's um, or rather we can call it as satellite navigation system which are under use or used by various uh, different state first is GLONASS Russia's global navigation system it is fully operational worldwide then we have Galileo a global system being developed by European Union and other partner countries it is planned to be operational by the year 2016 and will be fully deployed by 2020 uh, Bidu that is People's Republic of China regional system currently limited to Asia's and West Pacific. Compass. This is again Peop uh, People's Republic of China global system planned to be operational by 2020 Compass. IRNSS. This is Indian regional navigation system covering India and another Indian queen. We, call, uh, we also call it as Gagan. Then this is Q 
QZSS, Japanese Regional System covering Asia and Oceania. So hope you got a bit idea about GPS. Thank you so much. Take care.